So if you remember back to that Mario 35th Anniversary Direct, and we had a bunch of games shown, we had the Mario Kart Live that was announced, but we also had a system that we could collect that was announced, and it did come out now this past week. There's been a lot of talk about the PlayStation 5 and the new Xbox Series systems, but we can't forget about the Game & Watch Super Mario Bros. Edition. Yeah, because that is out now. It's $50. I picked it up at my local Best Buy and I wanted to talk a bit about it here with some first impressions. I thought it'd be something interesting to go over and then of course take apart. So if you guys enjoy this video, make sure you hit the like button down below to help out. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe down below. Let's uh, take a quick look around the box here. I do really, really like the design of this box. I mean, it shows the Game & Watch here in the middle, but I, I love kind of the Famicom gold all over it. It has a level for Mario kind of themed around it. And part of that is with the slip cover. So the slip cover does have some design on it when you, it seems, take this off. I, it looks like we'll lose like the clouds as an example and some of the bricks here. And we'll see how much of this box is, uh, is left behind after this plastic comes off here with the designs that are printed on top, but I really like the look of this. I understand some people might wanna buy this and just leave it in the box, but really the box itself is a really nice piece just to kind of have on display in the collection. Looks like on the back here, they show us Super Mario Bros, Super Mario Bros, The Lost Levels, Ball, and then just time, just a clock. So yeah, it has three games on here. Ball was the original Game & Watch game back in 1980, and they produced a ton of these Game & Watch systems throughout the 80s, became pretty popular overall, and we see Nintendo occasionally like reference them, but it was really neat to see them go back and just do a full Game & Watch reproduction here. Now they also added some more current features like USB Type-C charging, which is always welcome. I really like that Nintendo has gotten on board completely with USB Type-C, great stuff there. And then of colored screen. Like it, it would be really weird if they released this and it didn't have a colored screen that lights up and they went like full on retro with the Game & Watch. So I'm glad they made some of those upgrades for 2020. But here we are now slipping it out of the the casing here, and you can see how some of the stuff is left behind here uh, on the plastic. So you wanna keep this, at, you know, put it on display, maybe slip it back in here. But look what's right underneath of it, they have ball. So it does become much more simplistic when you take this off it. Hey, maybe some people like the look of this more and they don't want all of the Mario stuff all over it. I get what Nintendo was doing here. They had the Mario stuff themed on top for the 35th anniversary, but if you wanted to remove that completely and just have what looks like a very basic game and watch box, you can do that. And as we open it up here, they have a little message, special thanks to you. That's, that's pretty cool to see that. And opening up, looks like the first thing out is a USB-C to type A cable. It, it does say on the back, there's no AC adapter that's included. I'm sure you could hook this up to USB port on a laptop or computer or something and charge it just fine, but most of us have bricks kind of lying around now for cell phones and other accessories, and most likely you have a way to plug this in and charge it to the wall as it is. And then it looks like we have some paperwork and then the system itself. And there we are, that, wow, that looks really nice in person right now. Let me just double check any of the paperwork in here, see if there's anything interesting outside of it just explaining how to use it. Now it looks like it's just the basic user guide, how to plug it in, how to turn it on. That seems to be about it. Okay, back to the system here. So hopefully it has a charge. Wow, that looks, that looks nice. That feels kind of premium, actually just kind of holding it. It's plastic on the back. It has that Famicom gold and then kind of that burgundy red. And I, I really like the look of this thing right now. This is cool. Let's, let's see the screen. We have a power button here that'll turn it on. USB type C charging, like I said before. This cable, it does not appear to be very, very long. So you, if you have a USB C to type A that you can use outside of this one, it might be preferred. Let's turn it on real quick. Oh, that looks nice. 12.15, it's definitely not 12.15 right now, so I'll have to fix that. But this is just the clock, you can also hear it. That should be the, I guess, the second hand kind of moving there. Looks like it's this little dot that kind of moves around the screen. That's really cool, I like that. I have Mario running across the bottom here. Now, oh, that's, okay, so he hits the number. Ah, oh, that's fun. Now, it's, it's a clock, right? So, like, most people didn't buy this because it's a clock, they bought it because you can play some games on it. So we just press the little game button there. It comes up with a little sub menu, also the time at the top, and looks like our battery indicator. It came with 
Looks to be three out of four bars for charge. Not bad, so I'd say probably about halfway charged currently. I don't know how long it takes to charge this. I don't know the size of the battery, any of that. We'll get into that when we open this up and take a look inside. But let's start with just, I guess, just Super Mario Bros. Look at that, loaded right up pretty quick. As you expect, I mean, these are smaller ROMs. It's, it's not gonna take much. That's pretty loud. I'm looking around right now. I'm trying to see if, oh, okay, there it is. I was about to say, I'm trying to see if there is any kind of volume adjust or any way to adjust the brightness. So here's volume, let's just blast the volume. Let's turn the brightness all the way up too. That's pretty good, what if it all the way down? It, it gets pretty dim. That's not bad. So if you're, yeah, if you're in like a dark room, you could probably turn the brightness down a bit. Brightness being all the way up would be for if you're outside and it does get pretty bright. I'm gonna turn that down slightly. Not bad there. Let's let's see, uh, I guess, just how this sounds. That's pretty loud. Looks to be running pretty well. The D-pad isn't, the D-pad and A and B are in the, it's all the way at the bottom. I mean, I guess if it was up here, uh, I don't know. It's It's not bad. I mean, this is like a little, a fun little thing to get. I don't know if I would play all the way through a Mario game necessarily with these controls. They they work. The D-pad isn't bad from what I'm feeling. You can see it has a pivot point in the middle here. It feels very much like an NES D-pad, just a bit smaller. It also curves up at you on the edges. So not too bad there. A and B are just these rubberized buttons. Uh, they press and they're, they're not bad. They're not great in terms of the overall responsiveness, like just how they feel when you push down. They're a bit too mushy for me, but I think they work. This is this is kind of cool. I, I do like the, the idea of the Game & Watch having a couple of Mario games on there. It's $50, so it's not like breaking the bank for what it is and you know, it's Nintendo with one of their collector's items for the anniversary. So let's pause, we'll go hit game again, and let's go to Super Mario Bros. 2. Loaded right up, look at that. Now this is, <laughs> this is Mario 2, technically, right? In Japan, they said we probably didn't want it in the US because it was too hard for us, so they gave us that Doki Doki Panic kind of reskin for Mario 2, uh, but, this is kind of cool. I, again, it's celebrating Mario's 35th anniversary while also celebrating kind of the game and watch at the same time. Uh, this is, it, it runs well, sounds good. The, the sound is very, very loud for how small this is. I'm trying to figure out where the speaker would be right here, it looks like. Kind of coming out of the side, not bad. It'd be worse if it was on the back because then it'd be blasted away from you. I think that's loud enough, that's pretty good. The screen, okay, so the screen quality, looking at this right now is good enough. You can make out all the text up here. Mario looks fine. Ghosting, no issue at all that I can see. It, like if you shrink like that, there's no miss, nothing really crazy going on in terms of missing your sprite. No, I think, I think this is a, a good enough screen. $50 is not bad for this overall. Here's something else I like. It does save your place. So if I'm at Super Mario Bros. 2 right now, and I want to go back to Super Mario Bros. 1, it, sa it does save your place. So it has like, has its own quick resume. There you go. <laughs> just, you just have like three games to pick from. And then last but not least, we have Ball. Let's just do game A. And the Game & Watch games weren't anything too fancy. Again, these are from the 80s. It's, it's a very basic, think of like how we had with Tiger Electronics sort of, but Nintendo did a lot with them. I mean, they had like Donkey Kong, Zelda. There were quite a few games and franchises that they did with Game & Watch that helped it really get a place in the market. And this is just kind of where it all started. And I understand why Nintendo would want to go back to this and celebrate it by putting Ball, the first one, right next to Mario for the 35th anniversary. And you have to say, this thing is pretty cool. I just, I like the overall look of it. I think collectors will get a kick out of it. And it is pretty cool to see them kind of pay tribute to the Game & Watch series alongside of Mario, and then kind of dress it up in this really nice Famicom themed device. But Let's start taking a look inside of it and see how they put it together. So to start with, they do have four tri-tipped screws all the way around the edges. Here it's what Nintendo likes to do with their systems, kind of put these little tri-tip screws in. And there we go, just those four screws, that's all that was holding the backing on here. There's our rechargeable battery, 525 milliamp hours. It's very similar to the Joy-Con battery, actually, which is sort of funny. And then we have our speaker here, which does remind me of like a Switch speaker a bit. So interesting stuff there. USB 
C port over here along with our power button. And then we have two different cables, one for the LCD itself and then one for the backlight. Also look at all of the screws they put into this board to hold it down. That, that is a lot. I mean, usually you'd put at least two screws generally around where you'd plug in your charge port just to add a, a little bit of stability there. But then they went as far as to put four screws around where the D-pad is. They figured we'd be mashing a bunch there and then around A and B itself. They, they did put quite a bit into making sure this board wouldn't move. And with the ridiculous amount of motherboard screws out, the board does lift up. Keep in mind, this speaker is still soldered in, so I kind of want to lift it up here. And we do have kind of this shell or the skeleton behind the screen. It makes sense and you might bend it or something. Nintendo's just trying to make sure that that screen does not get bent if you decide to uh, kind of flex this system a little bit. From what I can tell, we have a screw here that's the last piece for holding down that shell. And I think I can just lift most of this away all at once. And there's the main chip after taking it apart. And from what I can tell, looking up the codes on the chip, this isn't a very powerful chip, go figure. It doesn't really have much cooling at all, just kind of sits there open. And it of course has to run on this fairly small battery overall. And since it's just playing NES games, it doesn't have to do really a ton, even store much stuff. So from what I've been able to gather, it's a 32-bit ARM Cortex-M7 at 280 megahertz, two megabytes of flash memory, one and a half megabytes of RAM. Now, could Nintendo have maybe changed this up a bit? Yeah, it's very possible. There, Maybe there is like something custom done with it, sure. But uh, from what I can tell, it's a very straightforward low power chip that only has to worry about keeping time as a clock and playing a couple of NES games. Oh, and it's gotta be able to play ball from the Game & Watch series. So, you know, that's that's a whole stress test on its own. And then to finish up, we have the backing of our screen here done by Intelux. It is glued in right now, so I'm not gonna play around with that too much. It's fairly small and pretty easy to break. And then I do have our D-pad here, which like I said, it's pretty small, but it has the nice kind of spike or peak in the middle and it is difficult to press all four points at once. So once again, good D-pad from Nintendo, very similar to what you'd see in an NES controller, just a bit smaller to fit into this. And then we have our A and B button, which is just basically one big membrane. Like it, it's just, there's no extra buttons or anything kind of on the other side. It's pretty straightforward there. It does try to mimic the same feel though of the original Game & Watch, so I do get that. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it for the new Game & Watch in 2020. Who would have thought we'd be at the end of 2020 and we'd be talking about a Game & Watch that Nintendo has officially released, but here we are. It of course celebrates that 35th anniversary from Mario and while there are only three games on here technically, since the fourth one is just a clock, it's still a pretty cool thing to have for collectors. Nintendo put in some time and effort into the overall build quality of this and the look. I really do like how this system looks, has that Famicom theme, and the box itself is pretty neat for display even with that slip cover. But let me know what you guys think about the new Game & Watch from Nintendo. $50, do you think it's worth picking up or did you already do that? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.